Hej, hello, bonjour, privet, ni hao. Xin chào. Hey Miss Denise, and in this video I will speak six languages. Hi guys, and welcome to my new YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of the questions that I usually get is uh, how come I speak so many different languages? I speak six languages more or less fluently. I would say that I speak English fluently, Swedish fluently, uh, French fluently, Russian fluently, spoke Mandarin fluently, now it's worse. Vietnamese, not fluently, but yeah, quite good still. In this video, I thought that I would speak all of these six languages and I would explain to you how come that I know them. This video will have subtitles, so you will be able to follow, even if you don't speak these languages. I hope you enjoy it. Let's start with the first language. Svenska är mitt modersmål och ni kanske trodde att det var ett annat språk, men nej. Jag är adopterad från Vietnam, så jag föddes i Hanoi och sen när jag bara var tre veckor gammal kom mina föräldrar från Sverige till Vietnam och jag lämnade Vietnam när jag var en månad gammal. Och sen så har jag vuxit upp i Stockholm, bodde där i hela mitt liv tills jag fyllde 19, 20. Jag gjorde militärtjänstgöring som tolk i ryska. Tolk och förhörsledare i ryska på Försvarets tolkskola i Uppsala. Sen flyttade jag till Moskva 2011 till 2013. Sen så backpackade jag i Sydostasien och besökte Vietnam första gången år 2013. Och flyttade till Kina sen i september 2013. Bodde där till och med januari 2015 och under den tiden så bodde jag i Thailand också och tränade thailboxing. Det vann min första thailboxingsfight på Knockout. Och sen 2015 flyttade jag till Vietnam och lärde ut en del engelska och pluggade lite vietnameska på egen hand. Och sen flyttade jag tillbaka till Stockholm och började plugga på handels, eh, handelshögskolan i Stockholm år 2015. Och slutade då 2018. Och sen flyttade jag tillbaka hit till, till Vietnam. Så ja, svenska är mitt eh, modersmål eh, och jag kunde bara prata svenska tills jag var ja, åtta år gammal. Och eh, som alla andra pluggade engelska och sen så när jag var tolv eh, valde mellan eh, ja, franska, spanska, tyska, mer engelska, valde franska. Och ja, alla andra språk, eh, ryska, mandarin, eh, vietnameska, alla de språken har jag lärt mig eh, på egen hand. Så jag har inte fått någonting gratis. Jag får ibland väldigt lite credit för att jag faktiskt eh, kan prata vietnameska och eh, mandarin. För att folk tror ju att, eh, ja, men det är för att eh, dina föräldrar så och så. Men nej, jag växer bara upp med svenska som språk. Det är mitt modersmål och eh, svenska är det språket som jag eh, räknar på. Och det är språket som jag eh, kan bäst helt enkelt. Hi guys, so of course I can speak English. English is my second language and I can speak English because, I don't know, everyone in Sweden can speak English. The reasons are because uh, a lot of people like to watch uh, English speaking movies uh, and we have subtitles in Sweden. A lot of people like to listen to like English lyrics and music. Everyone has to study English when we are eight years old in school and then we continue to study it until we are 90 years old and then you can specialize in English etc etc and also because actually Swedish and English aren't that different probably when you hear you speak Swedish you will feel like oh, wow that's super 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 different but fact is that if you can speak English very well then it's quite easy for you to learn Swedish the good thing with Swedish is that we don't have any tones so you can speak uh, Swedish with a very crappy like accent and people will still be able to understand you. English is my second best language and I feel comfortable speaking it. I always had quite easy to learn languages, so I don't really think that I ever like studied English as a language language like that. I think it comes natural when you like uh, you living in like Sweden, like a lot of things is in uh, or in English. The truth is that I have never been to the US and the only time I've been to the UK, first time was actually in 2016. When I had a banking internship, the latest time was in 2017, when I also had an uh, investment banking internship. I didn't really see that much of uh, the UK. In the beginning of last year, 2019, I was in Australia. But except for that, no, I haven't spent much time in English-speaking countries. 
Bonjour tout le monde, moi je m'appelle Denise et moi je suis très ravie que vous regardez mon vidéo aujourd'hui. Moi je peux parler français parce que quand j'avais 12 ans, j'ai commencé à étudier français à l'école. J'étudiais juste deux fois par semaine je pense, pendant 5 ans. J'ai choisi à apprendre français, pas d'amour, je pensais que c'était une langue euh, très jolie, très romantique. Et aussi parce qu'en Suède, il faut choisir entre espagnol, français et allemand. Quand nous avons 12 ans. Moi je pensais juste que oui, espagnol c'est une langue très 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 jolie aussi, mais je pensais que oui, si j'apprenne français d'abord, ça va être plus facile d'apprendre espagnol plus tard. J'étudie en fait un peu espagnol plus tard, c'est pas très 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 difficile si tu sais bien parler français, mais moi je savais pas bien parler français euh, après ça que j'avais 19 ans, parce que quand j'avais 19 ans, j'ai commencé à étudier russe. Et ensuite, je étudiais chinois et vietnamien. Et pour ça, je oublié mon français. Et c'est juste quand je commençais à parler français avec mon copain que j'ai repris euh, le français. Là, c'était en 2016 quand j'avais un stage à Tunisie. Avant ça, je dirais que mon français n'était pas bien du tout parce que vous savez que je étudiais deux fois par semaine euh, à l'école que vous savez beaucoup d'autres sujets. C'est pas très facile à pratiquer aussi si tu habites en Suède, comme moi j'habitais. Avant 2019, je suis juste partie en France une seule fois dans ma vie. Mais maintenant, mon copain, il est la seule personne avec qui je parle. Oh. Je peux dire à tout le monde qui va apprendre français que c'est pas, pas, pas très 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 difficile. Et aussi, vous savez beaucoup d'opportunités à pratiquer si euh, vous allez en France. Le français, il adore son langue et si vous essayez à parler français, ils vont essayer à vous comprendre et ouais, c'est très bien je pense. Et je veux aussi ajouter que maintenant mon copain, il parle très bien anglais. Mais en tout cas, nous sommes juste habitués à parler français, donc on connaît comme ça. Et maintenant, on va continuer avec mon quatrième langue. Я могу говорить по-русски, потому что раньше я делала военную службу, как переводчица русского языка в Швеции. Это было 13 месяцев, я это делала, но два месяца это была только как базовая военная служба, и 11 месяцев это было, да, очень-очень-очень как строго изучать русский язык. До того, как я начала изучать русский, я вообще ничего не знала о России. У меня не было никакого интереса для России. Для меня это только была как одна огромная страна, чуть-чуть холодно. Я хотела изучать русский, потому что я хотела стать дипломатом в будущем. И я знала то, что если я могла поступать в эту школу переводчиков, как это называется, у меня была возможность работать по посольству Швеции в будущем. Ну вот так вот. Я изучала русский в Швеции а, один год, и я тоже жила в Москве 13 месяцев. Когда я приехала в Москву, мой русский довольно хороший, но все еще это было очень-очень тяжело а, слышать то, что все сказали. Я очень сильно старалась, а, как иметь русские друзья. А, раньше я слышала то, что это было чуть тяжело иметь русские друзья, потому что в России есть эта, эта идея, то, что у тебя есть только а, один-два друзей, все остальные, они только знакомы. Я не говорила по-русски 7 лет, и я могу слышать то, что мои произношения это было много лучше раньше. Тоже моя грамматика, но все это было лучше раньше, конечно. Но все еще мой русский очень хороший, потому что у меня есть так хороший бас. Тоже, когда я говорю по-русски, у меня есть как какой как э, голос. А, чуть э, женские, чем э, как нормально. Я чуть э, собиваю это делать. Но вот так вот. Это слышится как э, красивее. Спасибо вам. Hello, 我叫丹尼斯,我是瑞典人,我英语是Sign 
人啊，韩国人和他们的英语说的不太好，所以、呃、如果我要跟他们说啊、呃，我要非常努力学，八个月以后我可以聊天一点。我觉得如果你要学韩语，你要学很多，和你要有很多的时间。如果你要学学好的，我觉得如果我在瑞典学韩语。呃，我的韩剧啊，不可以说的非常好，因为如果你要你的发音好和你要听得懂好，非常重要。呃，聊天跟中国人，现在我觉得很可惜，我的韩语不太好。我觉得我的越南语打扰我的中文，和我现在感觉，呃，我说韩语的时候。我也想啊，越、呃、南语。我觉得如果我回中国，大概一个月后，我觉得我可以说非常好，谢谢。Chào tất cả mọi người, đến đây bây giờ học tiếng Việt khoảng một năm rồi. Từ đây suy nghĩ cái lý do tại sao tiếng Việt không nên cho một trăm phần trăm là hoàn hảo là bởi vì bạn chơi tennis là người Tunisia nên từ đây xong chuyện bằng tiếng Pháp cũng bởi vì bạn bè ở đây hầu hết là người nước ngoài trước trước nên không biết cái gì về bố mẹ Việt Nam không biết tiếng Việt. bây giờ học ba một năm và những gì ok khá tốt không tốt lắm nhưng mà khá ok có được biểu cảm những gì muốn nói gì mà bạn mới có rất nhiều người mà bạn không hiểu thì những người việt pháp âm của những là nhiều một người nước ngoài và những gì có hai kiểu người việt kiểu một là nghĩ thì những là một trăm phần trăm người việt và nói rất là nhanh nhanh quá và những không hiểu số hai là những người mà nghĩ à những là người hàn quốc hoặc là một trăm phần trăm người nước ngoài và nghĩ thì không không thể nói bằng tiếng việt và không tập trứng thì nghĩ rồi gì cảm thấy không không thoải mái lắm thì nghĩ bây giờ sẽ cố gắng học tiếng việt và hy vọng cuối năm hai nghìn hai mươi tiếng việt của nghĩ sẽ rất là tốt So those are the languages that I know. A lot of people ask me how do you learn languages, how can you separate and la la la. And usually I say about this separating languages thing, I say that no, it's not difficult because I have them like separated in my head. But actually, to be honest, when making this video, uh, I had to take some breaks in between the recordings. Not that long breaks, just I mean just. Uh, a couple of seconds anyway, maybe a minute sometimes. My Vietnamese and Chinese are my worst languages right now and they also have some similarities. So I think now I just notice when I try to speak uh, uh, Chinese, I had to do retakes and retakes and retakes because of this just like adding in like some Vietnamese words. Now I actually realize that, you know, when switching between six languages, well then, especially between two that you don't know that well, well, that can be difficult. I think the answer to like, first of all, how you learn a language is hard work, of course. You have to put in the hard work and you have to find, of course, the motivation while you're doing it. So my motivation was always that I really like to uh, like understand different cultures. I was always fascinated about why things are the way they are, why people are the way they are, etc. So I just always wanted to find a way to like understand that, and I just understood that by learning languages, I could like connect with people, I could like understand the culture, like the country, like everything more. And especially now also, but especially when I was younger, I was so extremely curious on like why things were like different. Like why are things like like this and this and this? Why are people the way they are? La la la. For example, with like Russian, that really gave me motivation to study Russian like even more. And then I also want to answer to the second question, and that is, isn't it difficult to separate the languages in your head? And the thing is that you know when you reach a good level at languages, you would just like feel like. French, for example, it's not difficult to separate them if you have reached a very good level. The better you get at languages, the better you get at separating them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you thought it was interesting to hear me speak these uh, six languages. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And um, in a future video, I will tell you more detail about how I learn different languages. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and share it with uh, a friend, a family member who also would need some inspiration to study a new language. And uh, yeah. 
See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.